Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. Nifty reclaims that 10,000 mark after slipping below that level in today's trading session. Nifty bounced back and gained around half a percent for the day, ending comfortably around that 10,000, above that 10,000 mark. Good set of numbers from HPCL lift the sentiment, though disappointment creeps in from M&M and our India earnings to see how the large cap stocks have performed for the day. If you could look into the terminal here, you would see top gaining is India Oil Corporation which has ended the day with gains of around 8 odd percent. Next in the list we have BPCL, yet another OMC making it to the list of gainers and ending the day with gains of around 5 odd percent. Vedanta too has ended the day with 3 odd percent. On the flip side you have that Teva warning actually weighing on all, all the pharmaceutical counters be it Tata, be it Dr. Reddy, Aurobindo Pharma, Sun Pharmaceutical Industries, they've all ended the day with losses of around 1 to 3 odd percent Jayesh for that matter. Right Nikki, um, with that uh, let's introduce our guest uh, Mr. Raja Venkatraman, uh, Chief Thank Technical so Analyst uh, at Chart Advice. Uh, uh, mandatory yeah. chart check on the broader indices. Uh, your pick, uh, Nifty above 10,000, Nifty Bank above 25,000. Yes, uh, they are definitely on the cards because uh, Nifty did not look to have uh, too much pressure on the downside because uh, key levels are around uh, 9980 to 10,000. That was a key support area and from there uh, Nifty has rebounded quite well and um, it was actually looking towards the bank Nifty for some support and um, looking at the RBI policy which produced a pullback and it actually offered a good way to enter the markets again and from uh, a move about 25,000 will uh, augment good moves in the bank Nifty and that would actually impact the Nifty as well. So looking at uh, the future uh, prospects for the bank Nifty Another rate cut is not uh, seemingly possible by the end of this year. So that is a good trigger for the banks and that, could, that is actually propelling all the finance stocks, all the associated stocks like auto, realty and that is what is triggering a sharp move in the Nifty as well. And that's what we saw at the end of the day today. OMCs have clearly had a good run and the last laugh in this week. Uh, IOC for that matter has gained around 10 odd percent for the week. Your, space, uh, your view on this particular counter as well as the whole space. Correct. IOC has got uh, b broad prospects. Another, one of the main reasons is the crude oil. Crude oil has been a very important trigger for the OMCs. And if you look at the chart of crude oil, it uh, has a very interesting comparison to the OMCs and uh, crude oil looks to set for more higher gains. That's what is uh, our analysis is saying. And looking uh, at the crude oil charts, we look uh, somewhere in the region of 53, which would translate on the commodity markets. It's a very good play for the commodity space where they could actually look for a trade in crude oil, where you could see the targets towards uh, 3600. So that's a good prospect for the crude oil. So which automatically translates to the associated sectors like the OMCs and HP is another counter which uh, we have shortlisted and it's already run up quite a bit but then at every pullback it's a good buy and IOC is also looking quite positive. So yeah, both IOC and HP are the two pros bright prospects in the oil marketing space. Yes, HPCL we saw them uh, report numbers Correct. today and the stock ended the day with 10% uh, gain. But staying on with results, uh, uh, we have seen you know uh, disappointing results from all tyre counters uh, be it SEAT or MRF uh, uh, declined uh, today and uh, SEAT has been uh, on a declining spree. Their margins reported I believe was about uh, uh, lowest in the last five to seven quarters something. Uh, right. Do you think it's a, this this dip can be used as a very good buying opportunity for uh, some of these tire counters? Yes, uh, one of the main reason is that the price correction is always a good point to enter and another aiding factor is the anti-dumping duty uh, which has been recently imposed. So all that could culminate into a good buying point because these stocks are good in the long run and every good pullback in a stock is worth buying. So these stocks are definitely should be considered. Uh, Rajat, the other question, you just said that, uh, you know, price correction is actually makes for a good entry point. Correct. Do you feel the same for pharmaceutical space given how the pharma index as a whole has been performing past few consecutive sessions? Your view, anything that you like in this space? Yeah, there I would like to state the contrary. Uh, pharmas are uh, facing headwinds from the US and the regular crackdown by the US FDA is uh, breathing down on the Indian pharma companies. Their policies are getting stringent and like you can see today, uh, Biocon, they also had a similar uh, issue popping up. So these are, unless all these issues get ironed out, pharma is not something which one should look for buying in. And in fact, every rally is a sell opportunity and we are continuously advocating pharma as a sell trade. 
Sure. Um, I was just picking up from uh, what Nikki just mentioned in the Nifty gainers and losers. Um, yeah. um, so NTPC was one of the top gainers today, while uh, Tata Power was one of the top losers uh, today. Is there a pair trade uh, that you're looking over there? No, uh, both are uh, uh, operating in isolation, so a pair trade would not be advisable. So, but individual uh, trades on NTPC or Tata Power? NTPC is much better than uh, Tata Power. So, cement space also has had a good run in this week. Also, the numbers have been looking attractive, be it in terms of volume, despite the GST destocking uh, happening. Uh, the fun fundamentally, though, the valuations look a little lofty, but technically, how does it look? Technically, it looks very good. And uh, the recent uh, GST norms, which have actually benefited the cement companies from their uh, logistics point of view, is actually helping the cement counter shape up. And from the cement pack, uh, we have ACC and India Cements, which has got very, very bright prospects because uh, they are heading to a new high. So one should actually look at ACC and India Cements as a trading or an investment perspective. All right. Sure. Uh, before moving ahead, uh, let's just address yeah. how the mid-cap space uh, closed. Uh, well, as far as the broader index was concerned, the Nifty 500, it was a tug of war uh, between the bulls and the bears uh, uh, till about 2.30, 3pm. Uh, but in late trade, we saw them uh, surging and the advanced decline actually shifted in the favor of the advancing uh, stocks. Uh, so if you have a look at the individual performers, uh, we had the likes of uh, Unitech gaining uh, 10%, uh, Titan yet another counter on the back of uh, results uh, gaining more than 9%. Um, HPCL we spoke extensively about uh, ended the day with 9% uh, gains. Uh, m, &M uh, gained about uh, 7 odd percent. Uh, while on the losers, uh, we had uh, HDIL decline as much as 9%. Uh, SEAT also we spoke about ended the day with 8.5% uh, red. And Century Plyboards uh, ended the day with 5% uh, uh, losses. Um, Mr. Venkatraman, uh, Titan, yet another stock, uh, surprise on the results front. Uh, uh, has there a long trade opened up on the charts? Definitely. It was a long trade above uh, around 600. And uh, sharp move seen today, it has really widened the scope. It was uh, actually oscillating around the 560 uh, to 580 levels where it had uh, some struggle. And now, since this move has happened, it has opened up bright prospects. And the other thing is the FMCG sector is getting good uh, response from the GST and uh, the improvement in the gold space has also added to the Titan jewellery sure. which is what is added to the Titan's profit which is almost double. That's the reason for uh, the sharp move in Titan and one could definitely look at that. So my next question precisely was towards the FMCG index. The index as a okay. whole has not done well for the week. We've seen some losses coming in yeah. on this particular index. However, True. ITC has taken the major beating. However, some amount of good gains have been seen by Imami and HUL for the week. Uh, your views on the same? Yeah. So between Imami and HUL, uh, I would prefer HUL because uh, HUL has uh, come up afresh. And uh, the new moves which we saw today, uh, definitely you know is an invitation for us to go along in the next week and uh, look and again FMCG has been benefited by the GST impact and the sustained move in this sector would look to continue and one could see more uh, rises in HUL so one should uh, actually look at HUL as part of the uh, trading or investing pattern for the next week. So sure. one last question from my end. Sure, uh, no yesterday we saw Reliance hit a lifetime uh, high after nine odd years, uh, and Correct. today there was some soft uh, softness in prices. Uh, uh, your your take on Reliance? Reliance is pretty uh, solid after uh, almost a two two and a half years lull. It's moving quite a bit, but then at such high levels and uh, with the weekly closing, so there was some profit booking actually, which is getting immersed. Otherwise, uh, Reliance is still good to go for under 200 points. All right, sure. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking to Bloomberg Quint. Uh, yeah. We have come to the end of uh, Market Wrap uh, this Friday. Uh, you stay tuned into Bloomberg Quint for more. And for more stories, you can log on to BloombergQuint.com.